Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we will be checking equations today. We're going to check some equations, we're going to check variable equations, and as always, we are going to practice, practice, practice until we can figure out how this works. So let's talk about equations real quick. Qu equations have an equal sign. So that's basically what makes an equation an equation. So here's an example, 5 plus 1 equals 6. Notice there's an equal sign in there. The left side is equal to the right side. 5 minus 2 is 3. Again, the left side is equal to the right side. You have that equal sign in between. 3 times 7 equals 21. And 6 divided by 2 equals 30. Make sure that all the operations are represented there. So that's what an equation is. And here are some examples of what equations look like. Now, when we're asked to check equations, what we're going to do is make sure that the numbers on the left side of the equation are actually equal to the numbers on the right side. All four of these are correct, true equations. But sometimes equations aren't correct. So let's play that game, true or false, with checking equations. Our first equation, this little blue equation from a land in the sea, 5 plus 3 equals 8. Is that a true equation? Is the left side equal to the right side? Yes, it is. 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. Wonderful. How about this one? 15 minus 4 is equal to 7. Is this a true equation or false. Exactly, that one's a false equation. 15 minus 4 is equal to 11, so this is not a true equation. It's not balanced. The left side of the equal sign is not equal to the right side, so it's not a true equation. Let's do one with multiplication. 6 times negative 4 is equal to negative 24. What do we think about that one? Yeah, that's true. A positive times a negative gives you a negative. 6 times 4 is 24, so we're in good shape for that one as well. And our final equation, 60 divided by 3 is equal to negative 20. 60 divided by 3 is 20, but it would be a positive 20 when you take a positive divided by positive. So again, what's on the left side is not equal to what's on the right side. This is not a true equation. So that's basically the process of checking equations. Now equations are going to be a little more complicated than these ones, so let's do some practice with a couple of equations that have more than one step involved in them. Our first equation. Go ahead and pause the recording and solve that equation. Is the left side of the equation equal to the right side? Welcome back. 42 divided by 7 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. That's a true equation. The left side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation. It's true. Now we have this one that's a little bit more complicated. I want you to pause the recording and try and figure this one out. Remember to use correct order of operations when you're solving this, the left side, when you're simplifying the left side of this equation. All right, let's take a look. First, we solve what's inside of the parentheses. So 10 minus 4 is equal to 6. Everything else has remained the same. Now we have 3 times 6 minus 3 times 4. That's inside of those square brackets. So we're going to do the multiplying 3 times 6. And we'll also do the multiplying of 3 times 4. Because we do multiplication inside of parentheses before we simplify the subtraction. Our last part inside of the brackets there, the square brackets, 18 minus 12 is equal to 6. And when you have 5 right next to the parentheses, or brackets, I guess I should say, 5 next to those square brackets, it's implied that you will multiply. 5 times 6 gives you 30. 30 is equal to 25. Wait a second. Eh, that's incorrect. All right. So this is, oh, we did all the work correctly, but this is a false equation. This is not an equation because the left side is unbalanced from the right side. You have to have an equation balance. What's on the left needs to be equal to what's on the right. So in this case, we have one true equation and one that is not true. Let's um, do a little bit of practice with a variable. 
When we have an equation like this, x divided by 5 times 4 minus 1 equals 7, we have that equal sign, it's an equation, and we're asking, is 15 a solution to this equation? What that means is, is 15, if we put the number 15 in for x, is the equation balanced? We're checking the equation, only we have a variable in there. So our first step is to substitute 15 in there for x. Now we're going to solve just like we would with any normal equation. We start at the left moving to the right with multiplication and division. 15 divided by 5 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12. And now that we've finished the multiplication and division, we're going to move on to the addition subtraction. There is no addition, but we'll do the subtraction. 12 minus 1 is equal to 11. 11 is equal to 7. Obviously, this one here is incorrect. All right, 15 is not the solution to this equation. So we might try another number. How about 10? Is 10 a solution to this equation? I want you to go ahead and pause the recording. Check. You'll follow exactly the same steps we went through in the previous question. You're going to check if 10 is a solution to this equation. Welcome back. So we'll plug 10 into the equation. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. Yes, we have the correct solution. So 10 is a solution to this equation, and that's how we check it. We substitute the number in for the variable, which is the letter, and then we solve following the order of operations. Always follow those order of operations. Time for a little bit of practice. I want you to try this one out. Is 12 a solution to this equation? Pause the recording. Try and solve that one. And you're back. We plug the value of 12 in for y. That's the only thing that changed on this line. Now we're going to solve using the order of operations. So first we do multiplication and division from starting from the left, moving to the right. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And now 2 times 9 is 18. Now we have addition and subtraction left. So I'll do 3 plus 18, which gives me 21. And 21 minus 1 leaves me with 20. Yay! 12 is the solution to this equation. That's fantastic. What a great solution. What a great equation. And now we'll practice with one more so that you can see what one looks like when it doesn't work out. Is 7 a solution to this equation? Pause the recording. All right. We're going to substitute the value of 7 into this equation for the letter y. And we start with division and multiplication, right? Our order of operations. We do the multiplication and division in one step from left to right before we do the addition. In this case, just addition. So we'll do 16 divided by 2, which is 8, and 8 times 1, which is 8. And 5, now we're going to do the addition. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. Ha, 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 Did I fool you? I told you it wasn't going to work out, but it actually did. That was kind of mean of me, I guess. But hopefully you did it and you were confident and you were like, hey, this does work out. We'll see. I'll, I'll get all sorts of comments. Comment below if I got you on that one. Or if I didn't and you're mad at me. All right. Um, so quick recap, we checked our equations, we checked variable equations, and probably the most important step of all, the one that solidifies it in our brain, is that we practiced. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.